So now in this video, we're going to look at the AND gate one more time. So we made it with mechanical switches, one with a transistor switch, uh, a couple transistor switches, and this is going to be the improved version. If you really need AND gates, you're probably going to use an integrated circuit with AND gates, and this one has four. The 7408, the one I'm using, is the 74HC08 that I got from one of my... Uh, Kit. So one of the uh, integrated circuits went bad. I think it was the 74HC05, so it's not there anymore. But uh, the rest of these are uh, HC version of the 7400 series integrated circuits. And this kit's not available at the moment, but uh, there's similar ones to it. There's also the LS version. So in any case, there's the AND gate schematic symbol. Sometimes you see X, some, uh, sometimes you see Y for the output right there. But uh, here is the true table. It has the basic property of every input. Sometimes there's more inputs than two. But uh, every input needs to be high for the output to be high. If uh, one or all or any of them are low, then the output is low. So now we have the uh, integrated circuit there, the 74HC08. That quad means that there's four. You can see that there's four of the uh, AND gates on there. And each one of these pins is either an A input, a B input, or an output. Also we have the power pins. So you can see the uh, top right pin there, pin number 14, connected directly to the positive supply. We're using 5 volts really. You kind of want 5 volts for any of these integrated circuits unless you look at the data sheet and see you can use an, a different voltage. So we have ground at uh, pin 7, the bottom left pin there. Now you'll notice all kinds of jumpers that uh, are connected to the inputs and going directly to a supply rail. So these are going to the uh, positive supply. The two inputs over there are going directly to the negative supply and you don't want to leave the inputs floating. So these ones are floating now because we haven't wired up the circuitry yet. But uh, otherwise you don't want to leave inputs that you are not using floating. You can put it to one supply rail or the other. They don't let current in or out, they just look at the uh, voltage. So now for this demonstration, we're going to use a switch like I often do for a high low signal. We're also going to use a trim pot right here for a variable voltage. And when it's closer to the positive supply voltage, it'll be high uh, input signal and uh, like it is now. And when it's closer to the uh, negative voltage, it will be a low signal. We'll use this jumper to uh, feed that over there. But uh, before we do, we're going to zoom in. So for the switch, we're going to get a high signal to the uh, A input right there when I close the switch. You can see it goes to the positive side of the uh, supply and the switch is separated top to bottom. We'll have a direct connection right there. We do not want to leave it floating and uh, so we're going to take this resistor, 10 kilo ohm resistor, and where that jumper is, connect that to the negative rail right there. So. It will have a connection to the negative rail even though it's through the resistor it'll be zero volts until we press the switch then we'll get a high signal that overpowers the uh, resistor and i set that to the wrong row there we go negative rail going directly to where that jumper is now the other input our b input in this case we're going to use the uh, voltage from the trim pot right there and so that is the middle pin and we come up to a uh, third pin up right there that is the B input and uh, plug the jumper in right there for our output we want an LED in this case to light up when the output is high so I'm going to take a 220 ohm resistor since we're dealing with 5 volts goes to the output the uh, lowest pin on the right there pin number 8 and the LED the long lead the anode has to go to the resistor which heads to the output and uh, short lead the cathode goes to this gray jumper right there. So now it's off right now even though the uh, power is on. The trim pot here is, it was about halfway. Now it's definitely towards the positive side. So we have a high input there and the switch. It's not uh, closed, I haven't pressed it. So it's low right now, we have the pull down resistor. If I press the button, now that was high, the switch is high and the LED is on. So on, 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 we could look at it that way too. If I go more negative here, 
doesn't matter what I do with the switch, the output's going to be low. And uh, so both of these have to be high, both these inputs, for the output to be high. So now we're going to zoom in. This output is not a high or off. It actually goes high, basically it connects as close to the positive rail as it can, or it connects as close to the negative rail as it can. So right now the LED is off because the output is basically connected to the negative rail. We have negative rail on both sides of the load. We can take another LED here and put the long lead to the positive supply up there. It's a little crowded, so I'm just gonna move it, uh, this other load up here. And we're gonna again have to protect it from about five volts. So a 220 ohm resistor right there. And I have this jumper so that I can go from the uh, resistor there to our output. And uh, didn't want to go in that spot. So I'm going to slide it in back here. And this board's getting a little low now. So it's not working as good as it used to. Now we're going to come to that side of the resistor. You're going to see that the LED is on. That's because the output is actually low right now. Whereas the other side of the LED here is high. It's to the positive rail. And so since this is low, it's going to hold that position. If I turn this so that it's high and now we got both of them high. Now you can see that LED turns off and that one turns on. So right now the output is the source of current. You consider the more positive side the source and uh, the that's more negative there. So that LED is on and now it's sinking current. That's more positive going through the LED protective resistor and the jumper and so it can either source or sink current. We don't need one or the uh, other LED, we could get rid of one or the other. However, we want to wire it up. So now, it's always a good idea to get an idea of the voltage the integrated circuit will output because some of them don't go all the way to the rails. And so I have the probe here clipped and then that's crimped to a jumper going to the negative rail for that one. I also have one for the red probe there. And so we're going to the bottom pin, the output, and since we're not pressing the button, it's uh, not surprising that we have zero volts. Right now, this is up towards the positive rail though. When I press the uh, button, there you can see we actually output five volts with this integrated circuit. So that's good. That's a lot better than the uh, transistor version we put together in the last video. So, in any case, thanks for watching this video. I always make sure you turn off the multimeter, especially if the last setting is uh, current. You want to get it off current as soon as you're done measuring current. That's the easiest way to uh, damage the meter, trying to measure a voltage source when it's set to a current. But turn the meter off. So check out one of the other videos. Make sure you click like, subscribe, the bell, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next video.